Hello and welcome to the British Dapper and today we're talking about fashion faux pas. What to avoid at all costs. So when it comes to uh, fashion faux pas, um, this little presentation is just to give you a few ideas if you've never worn a suit before and you have no one that's talked to you about buying a suit and what to do when you get a suit this might be very useful to you if you're a bit more experienced then obviously some of the information i'm going to carry over to you today won't necessarily be relevant because you're already aware of it so today in this video we're going to cover three main areas and those areas are the fundamentals, fit and presentation. So when it comes to the first one, fundamentals, there are some very simple things that can occur when you buy a suit that people are not necessarily aware of if they've never bought one before or never been presented with one before. So, for example, if you're buying one off the peg um, uh, or you're having one where you go into a store to purchase it, you might find there's a few things that they do to the suit that you're not aware of. For example, when they do the tacking, for presentation and storage, a lot of suits have tacking. So, in other words, they will sew up pockets, uh, as you can see here they will also potentially sew the tail vents as well in the jacket and um, sometimes they will even tack in the shoulders as well to hold the suit jacket and also in this some cases even the pockets on the trousers will be tacked close as well this is purely for storage purposes and this is just to keep it looking good on the hangers whilst it's in storage. Now any decent reputable store should by rights remove the tacking once you've tried the suit on or even take it off before they put it on the, sh on the racks for people to try. That's not always the case. And I would suggest that if you find somebody or see somebody that's walking around in a suit with something like this clearly evident, quietly have a word with them. Don't embarrass them and simply say, you do realise that that tacking needs to be undone. Um, so if you ever get a jacket and you go to put your hands in the pockets and you can't put your hands in because they're all sewn up, that stitching can be easily removed. It's not normal stitching, it's very loosely stitched. Okay. Generally, you will find tacking is also an opposing colour to the suit. So, for example, if you've got a dark suit, you tend to find the tacking in white or off-white coloured stitching. If it's a light coloured suit, then it tends to be black stitching. So it does stand out, so you're aware that it shouldn't be there. The other thing to look out for is on the cuff sometimes a little label is sewn on there just tacked on there and um, it's not a branding it's not um, for that purpose it's purely so that when it's hanging in storage they can go along the rail and see by just looking at the sleeves oh that's a certain make that's another one and it's purely for that purpose and that should be removed okay it's not supposed to be on the suit once you wear it okay it's purely for identification purposes whilst it's in storage so the next subject we come on to is fit now you hear a lot of things about fit but we're going to cover a few things in here that are very basic things that you need to really ensure you get right to avoid those faux pas 
in the first place. So one of the first things I'd say is try and avoid that hyperfit. In other words, the really tight, restrictive look that you see a lot of people wear. Now, you can buy slim fitted suits and, um, for example, you might also see uh, skinny fit suits. Now, that's fine if you're that type of build that will carry it off. OK, so don't always think just because everybody's wearing skinny suits that it's going to suit you or fit you in the right way, especially if you're a stocky build. OK then you might want to go for a slightly looser fit. It looks better on the upper body and not so tight in the shoulders. And they are generally much better looking than if you tried to wear a really ultra high tight fit. So one of the other things to consider is that if we go the other extreme, so, for example, if it's too baggy, so if the shoulders come out too far, then it's not necessarily a good fit for you. If, uh, if it's too broad across the chest and it's baggy under the arms, there's a limit to how far it's a good fit and then too baggy. And it's always wise to get somebody else's advice when you're going to purchase a suit so they can either cast an eye over it and give you their opinion or they are much more experienced than you and can give you the benefit of their wisdom. So there are a couple of things to bear in mind. Now the other thing is when it comes to trousers then we're talking about sometimes you can have quite a wide fitted trouser and maybe that's not the best fit for you. If you're short and stocky or slightly overweight, then sometimes you end up with that effect where, where you can see that the trousers are too baggy um, and it also looks quite wide and makes you look shorter than you are. It makes you look more squat. So maybe consider a slightly tapered leg Maybe have them adjusted a little bit or change them when you're doing your suit selection to something that might have a tapered fit. The other thing is the pooling of the trousers at the break. So in other words, where the bottom of the trousers meets the shoe. Now, no break means it's literally just on the line of the top of the shoe. Yeah, and you might be able to see a little bit of sock. Uh, and then you've got half break, which is probably down to where the lacing crosses the shoe. And then you get um, you get to the extreme where you get a full break, which is probably about the second or third lace down. So that's where it breaks properly onto the shoe. It really depends on your style and uh, what you're going for. So. If you are one of those people with a skinny suit, then maybe you're going to look for no break because that fits that sort of look or maybe a half break. If you're going for a slightly wider and more regular fit, then you're probably looking for a full break where you wanted to come down and touch the shoe properly. So uh, just something else to consider. If you get it wrong, it stands out a mile. Something else to consider is the sleeve length of the jacket. So it really comes down to where the shirt comes. You want it to come to the knuckle part of the wrist. So it's just in front of where the thumb comes in. And you want maybe a half an inch three quarters of an inch, very most, or I would suggest between a quarter and a half an inch between the shirt and then where the, the actual cuff of the jacket is. So that's a good fit for the sleeve length. And something to bear in mind, if you're 
tall or short, the length of the jacket is something to really take consider into consideration. So if you are short in the torso, then consider a short fit in the jacket rather than a regular one, which might end up being two or three inches too long. And if you're short in the leg, it makes you look even shorter or sh uh, more squat. If you're tall, then generally, if you wear a short fitting jacket as a tall person, you tend to find the sleeves will be too short and also the jacket will be quite high um, on the torso. So it won't necessarily be a very flattering look and you might need to go for a long fit rather than a short or a regular fit as a tall person. But it all comes down to, if you get that the distance right in the cuff, chances are, and it's fitting you in the shoulders properly, the torso should be around about the right fit for your body type. But it's all a case of try one, try another until you are comfortable with what you see in the mirror. Don't make the mistake that because you're a 42 in one jacket, you're going to be a 42 in another. So try before you buy. Don't just buy it and walk out the store. And that brings us on to the next one, the final one, which is presentation. So when it comes to presentation, there are some basic faux pas that a lot of people will make that do to inexperience mostly. For example, you'll hear about what they call the working button. So if you're wearing a uh, three buttoned or two buttoned jacket, basically the bottom button is not done up on the jacket. If it's a single breasted, if it's a double breasted, I would suggest that be because it's double breasted, it looks better with all buttons done up. I know some people will actually still have that bottom button undone. But single breasted, bottom button is never done up and that's only because it makes the drape of the jacket uh, look a lot better. And if you sit down or anything like that, it uh, just accommodates that a little bit better. So one of the first things I would suggest is bottom button's undone. The one above that should be done up. And if you have a third button, then that is what they call optional. So you either do it up or you don't. All I would say is if you stick to the rule of thumb that if you're wearing a single breasted jacket, you don't do up the bottom button. And uh, if you're wearing a double breasted, do them all up. If you're wearing a blazer and it's a military blazer, then you do all the buttons up because when you're wearing it in a military setting, the, the old adage is, if it's got a button, it should be done up. So uh, just something else to consider. The next thing I'm gonna come on to is wearing white sports socks with a suit or with a formal attire. So there's nothing worse than seeing that. Um, I understand um, people might say, well, I don't have another pair of socks and I'm only gonna wear a suit once, but it's a basic thing. It just doesn't look right. Sport socks are for sport. Yeah, if you're gonna wear a suit and you're gonna wear a suit to look smart and presentable, uh, then really your socks need to meet that as well. The other thing I would suggest is not wearing socks at all. Now I know this is an unusual one, but if you're in a informal setting, and this tends to be more of a young man's thing, where you're wearing a slim fit suit, then I can understand why people wear, wouldn't wear socks with a pair of loafers as an example, because it's that typical sort of look that's around at the moment. But if you're looking at wearing something in a formal setting, that's a completely different thing. And I would suggest you always wear socks that are a similar color to the suit, 
or a similar colour to the sh uh, shoes. Something else that springs to mind is another faux pas would be just because some supermodel wears flip-flops or sliders with a suit doesn't mean to say it's a good look for you. Another thing that uh, is not uncommon to see is people dress up really smartly, they put a tie on, they iron a shirt, they wear a lovely suit, they're wearing a pocket square, but then they don't clean their shoes. And they probably haven't cleaned them since they bought them. And they get all scruffy and they scuff up and uh, even the, the, the dye comes off the shoe over time and you end up with grey rubbed down shoes. Um, the soles are not looking good, maybe their heels are worn down. That just spoils the whole aesthetic of the look. So I would suggest if you're going to wear a suit, then why not go the full hog, give those shoes a polish and the ultimate level we're looking at, potentially as a sartorial point of view, is give those shoes a mirror shine. It really does increase the ampage. Another thing that's not uncommon to see is people making the mistake of mixing the leathers that they're using. So for example, they're wearing brown shoes, but they wear a black belt, and maybe they wear a black watch strap if they're wearing uh, leather watch straps. I would suggest that um, you look at matching your belt and your shoe colors as closely as you can, okay? And the same with a watch strap. If you're gonna wear a leather watch strap, it should match your shoes. Now, the belt might not necessarily have to match your shoes or a watch strap if you're wearing a waistcoat and you, that obviously would cover the belt, so you shouldn't really see the belt anyway. But ideally, I would always go for same colors all the time. Wearing accessories is uh, another issue that uh, springs to mind. So whilst uh, you're in a formal setting, we're wearing a suit, we're going to somewhere, a business venture, so you've got a lovely watch on, but then you've got a bracelet, you've got lapel pins. Uh, if you're gonna wear one, yeah, wear one. Don't wear six or seven of them, you know, like we used to when we were going at school. Um, so just keep it nice and simple. Yeah, if you're gonna wear a ring, just wear one ring, maybe two, one on the other finger, uh, on the other hand, one on, uh, for example, if you're married. If you're gonna wear a watch, wear a watch that's in keeping with where you, what you're going to. So a nice dress watch. If it's a sport function or more relaxed and you're not gonna wear a suit, that's different. You can wear a big chunky watch, it's not a problem. But the idea is to keep it understated and sophisticated. So don't end up with loads of beads, yeah, if you're going to something that's formal, yeah, because the idea is not to draw too much attention to the beads. You want people to be looking at you and conversing with you rather than scanning everywhere else. So don't end up with rings on every finger. Don't think about wearing a necklace with, or a chain with a suit, unless it's a very informal look and you're not wearing a tie, then maybe wear something like that. Something else I've noticed of late is where somebody thinks it's really cool, they've got a three piece suit, so they wear a pocket watch chain and fob. Now there's nothing wrong with that at all. But then when you see them on their arm, they've got a wristwatch. Now, it's just a little bit of overkill. So if you're gonna have a pocket watch, which is designed to tell the time, you don't need a wristwatch as well. Have one or the other. There's no need for both. Finally, or one of the final things is 
when it comes to patterns. So it's very easy to overcomplicate things with if you're wearing a pattern suit to a pattern tie, pattern shirt, pocket square. So I would always suggest try and keep something neutral. So in most cases, I'll wear a plain shirt. It might be a different color, for example, a pink or a blue or maybe even a gray or it could be an off-white, um, a pale blue maybe, pale pastel green, those sort of colors, but they are always plain, not striped or patterned, especially if you've got other patterns going on in the outfit or the ensemble. So just be a little bit careful with that. It's very easily done um, and it can be overdone. Not an uncommon thing to see. The very last thing I'm going to say is where people try too hard with their outfits. So for example, they will, in the pocket square, they will make sure that everything is exactly how it should be. They will iron it. They will make sure that the peaks are the same distance apart and the same height, and they will then put it in their pocket. They will make sure their tie has got a certain knot and it's exactly symmetrical and, yeah, and that's, you know, that's fine. I understand that, but, it does look contrived. So the idea is to look elegant, sophisticated, but at the same time with maybe a slightly nonchalant way of uh, dressing, you know, quite relaxed and make you own the suit, not the suit owning you. That I think that's the key word I would say. So that's something to really consider. And the final thing I would say is it's not a faux pas, it's the other way of looking at it. It's fun, it's supposed to be fun. Getting dressed up and going out and showing how good you dress is fun. If you are so tight and constricted with, you know, emotionally because you're worried about how people are gonna see you or take you, that's really gonna not help you and the idea is to relax into it and enjoy it. You may get compliments, but don't expect them. And you shouldn't do, really, because you don't want the compliments as such, because you're just there to enjoy yourself and look the part. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Um, let us know what your faux pas are or what you've witnessed other people do. And... Uh, be lovely to hear from you so if you've got something to say that's constructive jot it down below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can we love subscribers so if you'd like to subscribe then please feel free to do so and if you want notifications then simply hit the bell and you should get some coming through when our next lot of videos are coming out so until next time take care